So now we can find critical points of functions and then classify them as maxima or minima. We can move on to using this sort of knowledge for the real world problems that come up in optimization. Real world problems often require maximizing or minimizing something that is looking for an optimal value. So for example, you might be thinking about maximizing your profits, or minimizing costs, and doing that by choosing an optimal input. So these problems we can solve using derivatives and calculus. The way we optimize things is um, given, well one way to do it is given in this seven point uh, process here. Sometimes it's useful to draw a diagram, if it's not don't worry about it, but sometimes it will be, and in the examples that I show you later in this video uh, we'll draw some diagrams to set up our problems. We need to determine what it is we need to maximize or minimize, so identify that in the question that you're given. Here I'm just going to call that P, but you call it whatever makes sense for the problem that you're working on. Then using what you've got, uh, you're given information in your diagram, we try to write an equation. So this is the, the model building stage. So a model for P in terms of other variables, uh, one other variable or possibly more, so maybe X. Then what we need to do is find the derivative, set that to zero and solve for X. So this is where we're finding out critical points and figuring out where we can get uh, maxima or minima. Once we've done that, we use either the first or the second derivative test to see which values of x give us maxima or minima. We choose the one that we want given the question that we're trying to solve, and that gives us our, our answer. We answer it in words, of course, back in terms of the kind of uh, wording that the problem is given in. So that's our process. Let's start off by looking at this example. We've got a farmer has two kilometers of fencing materials and wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight river. No fence is required along the river. What are the dimensions of the field that will give the largest area, given that we've only got those two kilometers worth of fencing materials? You might want to pause here and reread that yourself just to get that uh, working in your head. Okay, so some important information. We've got two kilometers of materials. So that gives us a length of stuff that we've got restrictions on. We want a rectangular field and it's bordering a straight river. So one of the edges of the rectangle is a river. We don't need any fence along the river. We want to find what are the dimensions. So that's the unknown and we want to give the largest area. So we want to maximize area. So we want to maximize the area and it looks like the dimensions of the field will be the independent variables. So area depends on the dimensions. We want to find the dimensions which give us the optimum maximum area for our field. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch here. Here's my, my straight river coming along the bottom and my field needs to be a rectangle so I'm going to draw it like this and I'm going to call this dimension along the side X and this one across the top here I'm going to call that Y. So of course we know the area of a rectangle, we know that that's going to be x times y, but we don't know how to deal with two variable functions. Area is equal to the product of x and y, that's two independent variables, so I need to figure out somehow how to get rid of one of these using the other information we've got. Now here we're told that we've got two kilometers of fencing material, and that two kilometers has to get us around that whole rectangular field. Remember there's no, no fence down here on the river, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's say we've got two kilometers worth of materials and that's going to be one X plus a Y plus another X. So two X plus Y. So in other words, that actually tells us that Y is equal to two minus two X for this particular problem. So we can use that back in our A formula. We can say that the area is going to be X times two minus two X, getting rid of Y. So now we're back to a, a one variable function that we know how to deal with in this, uh, uh, with what we've learnt so far. So I'm just going to expand that out, it'll make it easier in a moment. Now we are looking for the maximum area, so we want to maximize the area, we want to find the x that will give us the maximum area, so we need to differentiate, we need to find the critical points and check that we've got one that gives us a maximum. So let's work on that now. We've got dA dx will be equal to 2 minus 4x, we're going to set that equal to zero to find our critical point locations. Two minus four x equals zero. That tells us that two equals four x, or 
x is equal to one half. So that's the location of our possible maximum or minimum. We want to figure out what it is. So x equals a half is critical point. I'm going to use the second derivative test to check whether it's a max or a min. So I need the second derivative, d2a dx squared. Differentiating 2 minus 4x, we get minus 4, which is less than 0 for all x values, including our critical point. So at x equals a half, we have, when the second derivative is less than 0, a maximum. So that's exactly what we want. Our critical point is giving us the maximum for the area. So what is the area? Uh, a at one half. What's that going to be? A at one half. We're going to substitute that into our function. And we'll get an area of one half square kilometers. So the maximum area of the field is one half a square kilometer and it's going to have sides one half a kilometer and one kilometer Oops. so that's the the short side and the longer side okay so that's our, our optimization problem there we have a, a representation for the area in our picture here it gives us a function we need to remove a variable so we get a as a function of x differentiate that and set it to zero to find the critical point and then check that that critical point gives us a maximum using the second derivative test. Find our area and answer the original question which was what are the dimensions of that field. So that's one optimization problem for us. Let's check out another one. It's actually a fairly similar problem. We're told that a manufacturer wants to build a box with a square base but no lid and it's going to have a surface area of 80 square centimeters. And the question asks us, what are the box dimensions? So what are the dimensions of the box that give us a maximum box volume? So in other words, we need to get maximum volume. So we need to maximize a volume uh, given a certain set of dimensions for the box. Now this one, I really need to draw a picture to figure out what's going on. So here's a template of a box with a square base, x by x. I'm going to let that the square side length be x and four sides which are y in height. I'm not sure what height that is, but it could be different from x. If it had a lid on it, we'd actually have an extra square or rectangle on the side here, but we've got no lid, so just the four sides and the base. Now, a box of this type, I know that the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height of the box, so that's x squared times y. Just like before, I've got this problem of two independent variables, and we don't know how to deal with that. In, in what we've learnt with uh, so far. So I need to use the other information that the surface area is equal to 80 square centimetres. Now the surface area of this box is going to be the sum of the areas of those five rectangles, one of which is a square. So I know that the surface area is going to be x squared, the area of the base, plus four lots of the area of those rectangles, which is four times x times y. Now if that's going to be equal to 80 square centimetres, I can rearrange that and get an expression for y, or an equation for y if you like. So y is equal to 80 minus x squared over 4x. So I can use that, substitute it back up there into my volume formula, and I'll get, so v is equal to x squared multiplied by y, one of the x's will cancel, and we'll get, we'll get 80 x oops, minus x cubed all over 4. So that's our volume as a function of one variable, x. And I can actually cancel that down a bit. I get the 80 on 4 reduced down to 20x and then minus x cubed on 4. Now we want to maximize the volume and find the box dimensions. So I'm going to take the derivative of v with respect to x, set to 0, find the critical point, check that it gives me a maximum and then I'll be able to answer my question. So jumping over we'll have dv dx is equal to 20 minus 3x squared on 4. 
set that to 0, 0 equals 20 minus 3x squared on 4 and we can rearrange that to get x equal to plus or minus square root of 80 on 3 so that's our critical point and where our potential maximum occurs we won't worry about the negative because we can't have a box with a negative side length so ignore that ignore the negative value to check if we've got a maximum or a minimum let's look at d2v dx squared the derivative up here is going to give us minus 6x on 4 or minus 3x on 2 if you cancel it down now at x equal to root 80 on 3 then we have d2v dx squared equal to it's going to be minus 3 on 2 times the square root of 80 on 3 it's a negative value so it's less than 0 so x equal to root 80 on 3 will give us a maximum for the volume so we've got the right dimensions so the answer to our question then is that the box dimensions for maximum volume are base width of x which is root 80 on 3 and a height if we can just do this one on the calculator you jump back height is going to be 80 minus that value squared over 4x and you can get that that's approximately 2.6 centimeters so that's the dimensions of our box that will have maximum volume okay so that's it for this video go and try out some of those worksheet problems and then come back and we'll be on for the last video